tell you, it's, uh, the devil's getting to me today. I uh, come into church and I, I walk into the sanctuary and it's cold as all get out. I, I hit my fingers are freezing. The pilot light had gone out. Luckily, uh, if you get a chance, give Larry and Harry a big hug. They look pilot light. So thank you. Uh, it feels good in here now. And uh, come find out DJ said DJ can't run the soundboard, so Brad has graciously uh, volunteered to hop out of the choir for the cantata to run the soundboard. Can I help Brad? Is that possible? Okay, okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we got some family members who are coming who are running behind, so I tell you, it's, it's, it's one of those mornings. But, uh, you know, we're here in the Lord's house today. We have heat. We're here. We're breathing. We've got a lot of things to be thankful for. We are thankful for a Savior who was born in a manger, who laid about on the cross for our sins. Praise be to God. So uh, I've got a few announcements for you. Um, Cantata's going on today. I'm sure that's why you're all here. I'm glad you're here. And I, I pray that uh, the Lord will bless you through song. The choir has worked really hard. Speaking of working really hard, Ted has got his program coming up tonight. Ted's been practicing like crazy. Uh, you know, we installed a little video doorbell out uh, the one door leads to the office. And I'll, I'll get an alert on my phone, smartphone, uh, doorbell has been alerted. I see Ted walking in, Ted walking out. He's practicing several hours a day for his program. <laughs> uh, he and Jennifer will present their program tonight at 6 o'clock. Ted's going to be playing uh, some music with a virtual symphony. Uh, it's a uh, essentially a symphony, string symphony on the CD, and he'll be playing alongside of it. Playing some Christmas classics. It is beautiful, beautiful. And Jennifer will be showcasing her beautiful voice for several songs. And I encourage you to come out. But if you do come out, bring you some pickups. Bring some snacks with you. We'll have a reception after the service tonight in the activity building. And I made some sausage balls. If you want to try my sausage balls, please come out and do so. Uh, make sure you eat all of them because I don't need to take them home with me. I them. Um, also mentioned to you, check your mailbox. There's a bunch of cars back yonder in the Huggins Hall. Uh, some of them are kind of full. Some of them are not. Here comes some people. I also mentioned to you we have a Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve. It's going to be a candlelight type of service. It's going to be a little dark. Uh, it should be a, a good time. I've already laid out the point of service and I'm looking forward to it. We're going to talk about light and dark, of course. I encourage you to come out for that. And there are still a few points set. I think about four or so that can be purchased. It's too late to get them in the uh, thank you and memory of, but there's still four to be purchased. And y'all probably got one of the sheets listing the memorials and the NRs all for the poinsettias. Mentioned to you there were, by accident, there were some names left off. Uh, Patsy donated or uh, purchased a poinsettia in memory of Ed, a member of her stepdad, Jerry Brown. I mentioned that to, to y'all today. Um, also, uh, we need some help following the service. If any of the strong, able bodied men, We'd like to help move the piano tonight. Ted wants to turn around so the keys face the, the audience uh, so he can be showcased his concert tonight. So I encourage you, if anybody's able to help, so that means uh, some younger folks can help. Okie dokie. Am I missing any announcements? Do we know of anything else that's going on? Uh, it's been a little crazy for me and my family. Crazy for y'all. Christmas time running here and there and everywhere else. Okay, well, I must be the only one. But, uh, do welcome you here and encourage you to uh, focus not on yourself, but about Him. Focus on Him. Uh, this worship service isn't for us. This is not some sort of entertainment experience. You and our choir will sing very well. This is about praising our God, who's given so much to us, uh, gave us His only begotten Son, uh, who, because He loves us so much. So at this time, we will light the Advent candles, and following that, we'll have a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to worship and to praise you as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent. This fourth Sunday, we think about the first coming, but we think also about the second coming, Lord. May we be ready. 
May our hearts and our minds and our souls be ready with you, God. And may we encourage those in our families, our, our social circles, our neighbors, our co-workers, Lord, to come to know you if they don't already, Lord. May this moment of worship please honor you. We do come with heavy hearts, Lord, lifting up several who are in our prayer list. We continue to pray for the Lyle's family, Lord, and the loss of Jody. We also pray for Rhonda. Uh, she's uh, supposed to be here in a little bit, Lord, to help us sing the title, Lord. But there have been some bad news with her issue, issue Lord, with the, uh, you know the situation, Lord, with the cancer wrapped around a, a nerve for her eye, Lord. This the surgery's going to be a little more extensive on the more surgeries coming up, Lord, radiation. Pray that you'll be with her and Barbara as they uh, travel another hard road of life. Be with them, Lord. Be, may your peace and your strength be with them. And we pray for all the prayer concerns we have, Lord. And we have several who are sick with flu and colds and other illnesses, Lord. May your peace be with them, Lord. Your strength, your healing. We pray for our country, Lord. As a divided country, as people divide themselves in different tribes and, and factions and parties, Lord. May we as your Christian people come together and show love and peace and mercy to this world. And may we encourage unity, Lord. Unity under the real true King, Christ the King. Thank you so much, Lord. And now we pray. Amen. All rise for number 88, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
applies for the doxology.
any other. On the Judean hillsides near the tiny village of Bethlehem, shepherds were going about their duties of tending their flocks beneath a canopy of stars. All at once the night wind carried an unfamiliar and captivating sound. The shepherds were alarmed. He could not believe the sign as angels filled the skies overhead and proclaimed good news of great joy for all people.
as we pause today to remember the glorious reverence of a starlit and most holy night to behold the wondrous unfolding of God's perfect plan for our rescue and redemption. Remember that it was the Father's great love for us that pierced the darkness of our sin for the everlasting light of salvation.
With hearts full of hope and expectation, we lift our voices in triumphant praise. We join the song of angels and shepherds as we rejoice in the birth of our Savior, Christ the King of Kings. As we await our return, our hearts are all singing the praise of Messiah, Jesus, our Emmanuel.
I just want to thank everybody for all the prayers that y'all have sent me. You've prayed me through many, many things. Now I have another battle. But God gives his hardest battles to his strongest warriors. That is exactly how I feel. I ended up having a malignant tumor that had wrapped around the nerves in my face and my eye. I'm very blessed to have my sight right now. And I have to undergo six weeks of radiation Monday through Friday steady to try to see if they can stop what they think they got it all, but it, it wrapped around pretty good and they're concerned. So I have one more phase surgery January the 3rd. You can't imagine what I look like all up under here. They had to sew my face. I'm very blessed to be alive. But I will not be back for just a little bit. But I had to come and sing and make a joyful noise just one more time. So I just want y'all to continue to pray for me and for my mom. She's my strength. God's got this. I know it. I'm not a miracle for no reason because I'm here today seeing because God is still giving me miracles. The church is a blessing. Merry Christmas to all. Mom and Barbara, we love you all and we're praying for you. Thank you so much. We know that you are. Uh, if you all get a chance, send a card, call, don't go visit because, you know, most of you all know Rhonda's anti rejection medication because her immune system in this situation is paramount. She uh, uh, stay away from bugs. And there's a lot going around. Um, but uh, I just want to say I'm proud of our choir. They did a really good job. Even, even encouraging the all. Some of this up here. I uh, do want to mention to you, and I forgot to do this earlier. Uh, most of y'all know we sponsor a fifth grade class at Cardinal Elementary, uh, Diane Barron's class, and we've been spoiling them rotten with goodies and all kind of neat things. And two of our individuals in our church have been going and, on a weekly basis and, and working with kids, doing math, helping with math, helping with uh, just uh, having lunch with one kid, and doing different various things in the classroom. So they sent us some goodies, uh, some ornaments that the kids decorated. So at some point today, and we'll try to get these on the Christmas tree, these ornaments were decorated by the kids in the fifth grade class, Miss Barron's fifth grade class. So, uh, and uh, I got a picture I'll try to put up next week to show you all uh, from that class. So just like any good Baptist, I feel we have to look at the Bible, uh, just not have a cantata. So I'm going to share a few verses with you from uh, Isaiah 35 and share a few thoughts with you about a fixer upper. Uh, my... Uh, when Elias, one youngest kid, had the therapy, we would go to a, a play, physical therapy place, and they would have a TV on out in the waiting room, so Jonas and I would sit, he would do his homework. And occasionally, when he got done, he'd watch these TV shows on like HGTV and stuff. We don't have cable at the house, we don't get these shows. But he'd watch all these fixer-upper type shows and flipping houses type shows, and he got kind of addicted to it, and I think part of it's his grandma's fault on that. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, Talk about fixer-uppers. You know, there's a lot of houses on these TV shows where they go in and they try to fix things up and they try to sell them for a little bit more than what they've invested in it. They, they try to gussy it up and make it look pretty. And, you know, some of these shows are a little uh, outlandish. You know, it's a very dilapidated, run-down house and, the, you know, the, the, the people who want to fix it up have a budget of like five or to five million dollars. and But the, the guy is like a, out of work and the, the mom is like a stay-at-home mom and they don't know how to get the money to do it, you know. But they fix up these houses and make them look a lot better for a newer perspective on her for themselves. But you think about it, we live in a world that's a fixer-upper in it. We have lives that are fixer-upper type of lives. Nobody here is perfect. Uh, nobody has a perfect life. Nobody has a perfect home. Nobody has a perfect church. We're not perfect by any means. If you want to know the world, I can tell you. A few at least, right? But we live in a fixer-upper type world. Our passage today in Isaiah chapter 35, I'll read a few verses here, talks a bit about fixer-uppers. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like a crocus. And it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make feeble or make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. That the eyes of the blind shall be open, 
ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and stream to the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. And the haunt, the haunt of jackals where they lie down, grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there. It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if there are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. And they shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. The everlasting joy that shall be upon their heads. They shall take gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. These words were written to those in exile in Babylon, the, the uh, broken world in which Isaiah lived, that God had allowed the Israelites to be in for their punishment. But these words translate well for the Advent season because we live in a time where we are all fixer-uppers. A land that has been broken by sin, a people that has been broken by sin, a creation that has been broken by sin, and we await the Lord's return with His extravagant budget to fix it up. The... Uh, the first point I want to make to you today is the verses 1 through 2 and 6 through 7 speak of the notion of the restoration of creation. Uh, you know, the, the imagery here of arid dry lands uh, and images of jackals, it, it just it's, uh, gives you a visual image in your mind's eye of a land that is parched, a land that is broken, a land that is not what it should be. And there's a shift of poetic images to fertile farming land, abundant water spaces. On one literal level, we find a notion of a new creation. Very much akin to what we find in Revelation chapter 21. We read verses 1 through 2 here. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. The sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. You see, one day this world, this broken world where polar ice caps are melting and and we're destroying the land and cutting down trees and whatever else you may think of or whatever one uh, person may say that we're just doing to the earth. It ain't what it should be. And as uh, Joni Mitchell once said, we paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Right? But one day God will restore His creation to what it should be. Flourishing, not failing. Where it's broken, now it shall be fixed and shall be abundant. One day, when the King comes again, in His second advent, creation shall be restored. Where we as humans have broken it. Where sin has broken it, marred it. It will be fixed. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. God's not just going to totally throw away what He's already created, but He's going to mend it and fix it and make it better. One day we'll find a hope, a restoration of a new creation. The scholastic uh, teacher of the Middle Ages, uh, St. Anselm of Canterbury, said this, We believe that the material substance of the world must be renewed. This will not take place until the number of the elect is accomplished. So one day when the Lord comes back, riding His white horse, coming as a king to conquer and destroy the forces of evil, when the new Jerusalem comes, when, when sighing and crying and death are no more, when the seas are no more, and the stillest glass, as Revelation describes them, there will be renewal, whether literally or metaphorically, upon this world. God will renew creation. But there's hope. Not just for renewal of creation, there's a hope and restoration for His people. You see, there's a hope and healing and restoration for His faithful people. God's Christian people. Now, Rhonda is, is, and Barbara are dealing with this, this moment of this season of, of uncertainty, this season of suffering. Um, you know, I, I'm convinced that Barbara and, and, and Rhonda and the rest of the family are some of the strongest people I've ever met. Y'all who know her, uh, and those who don't, we need a little bit of insight. Uh, Barbara lost her husband to a heart uh, defect, heart disease, a uh, genetic heart disease that was passed on to the children. Barbara's lost two children, uh, one with complications, essentially from cancer, that was came out of his, his heart transplant. Rhonda's had a heart transplant and now is dealing with cancer. Um, God gets them through. And God will one day restore the human feebleness and frailness 
into something that is better. You see, this the, the passage here we talk about talks about weak hands and feeble knees. As many of us experience the frailties of life as our bodies are able to do what it used to do. We can't get around like we used to. And, and most, most of us in the congregation think I'm one of the young people here, and I am. But uh, <laughs> my body ain't what it used to be. You can ask my wife. Knees stop working. Foot's still work, not working. I tend to stump my toe and hurt my foot. I'm hobbling around. But one day, one day this whole body falling apart thing, the shrinking, the failing, the, the hearts that give up, the cancer that grows, one day God will mend us and make us whole. God will do away with the dysfunction and frailty of humanity. And God will make us whole, give us new bodies if we're faithful to Him. Creation one day will be restored to what it should be. You see, God created the ideal of Eden. He gave it to Adam and Eve, but sin came into the world and, and broke the plan that God made. And God came up with a better plan. God came up with Jesus Christ, who was going to restore His creation. You see, I don't say this out of a vacuum. I don't just think that there's blind hope here. You see, with the first advent, with the first coming, uh, Jesus coming in the crib and dying on the cross, we've been given a down payment of what is to come. A glimpse, uh, as some New Testament scholars call it, a, an already but not yet. We see glimpses and glimmers of glory in the life that is to be through the Holy Spirit working in our lives today. Even though our bodies fail us, our spirits feel the Holy Spirit's presence with us. That's God's new creation reaching down into this broken world and putting His fingers on us. Giving us glimpses of what can be. Insights into realms of glory that we cannot comprehend. You see, where the, we had, once had weak hands and feeble knees, we're told, here is your God. The passage says, behold your God. Here is your God. God's with us. And as we long for that one day when He comes back, <coughs> makes all things right, He is with us. Tuesday night during our um, our service, candlelight service, and Christmas Eve service, we're going to ponder a little bit more of that name Emmanuel, God with us, and what that may mean for us. But until then, let us think about this notion that no matter how broken we feel, no matter how our sins have broken us, our body is broken, no matter how much this world has beaten us down, the throes of depression and grief pull us down, God's still with us. And the points of glory, the, the beams of glory break down on us today and give us hope of a future tomorrow. He's already here, in part, as He will come soon. We also find in this passage a notion of restoration. Restoration of relationship between a holy God and a broken people. You see, sin, uh, this, this disobedience to God, has, has broken us. It's, it's separated us from God. Or as once Adam and Eve walked along with God in the garden where they, they chatted with Him, and, you know, and the, uh, sin separated them. They tried to hide from God in the garden, according to Genesis, whenever God came around. You see, sin's broken our relationship with what we could have with God. It wasn't until the cross, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, that we have a way to mend that relationship. And this, this passage in Isaiah speaks a little bit to it. It talks about this highway. This highway to God where it's the way of the holiness. Because it's a way to the holy God. A God who is separated from the evils of this world. Separated from the brokenness of man. Separated from sin. He's beyond it. He's better. This passage gives us two negatives and two positive statements about this restoration path to God. This highway of verse 8. The first point is that there will be no unclean people on this path. Verse 8 talks about that no unclean person shall pass over it. Does that mean that uh, it's selective? Yeah, it's the highway to God, the, the path to heaven is selective. It's, it's narrow. Some don't choose it. Anybody can choose it, but some don't choose it. But this passage talks about this notion that all the unholy will be restored to a holy state through a holy God. Through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross, we are made whole with God. It's not our holiness, but His that covers us it makes us holy. It's our get out of jail free card, if I can use my board game terminology. It's our free pass that gets us in through Jesus Christ 
No unclean person shall be on his path because through the cross we are made healed, we are made pure, and we are qualified as fresh in his eyes. This passage also talks about no fools being on the path. The latter part of verse 8. No fools. They shall not go astray. You see, a fool is someone who doesn't seriously obey, embrace God's instruction and discipline. But on this path, those that are redeemed are led by God. They follow God. They have no reason to stray because He is their light on the path. And the redeemed is mentioned here in this passage. The third thing here, that there will be redeemed on the path. Now, redeemed is kind of a familiar kin type term, terminology. Uh, they've been adopted, if you will, if you use some of Paul's language. As Christians, we are adopted into God's family. Uh, whereas once we were strays, we were outcasts, we were orphans, we've been adopted and brought into God's family. We're not blood family with each other. I'm, I'm related to some of y'all by marriage and by blood. A lot of y'all I'm not related to. None whatsoever. But I'm related to you by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're all brothers and sisters in the family. And we are brought back into the family and we are kin, we are redeemed and we can be on that path as a part of God's family. As Isaiah 4, 3, 1 reads, I have redeemed you, I have called you by name. You're mine. Our Father, our Daddy knows us. He loves us. He cares for us and wants us. This passage also talks about a, another group, the ransom. They'll be on this path. Ransom is kind of like redeemed a little bit, but ransom is an economic transaction where a price has been paid for a person so they can become property of the payer. We were bought for the price. God's only son who died on the cross. The cross is the price that bought us. We have been redeemed, brought into the family. We have been ransomed. We've been purchased by Jesus Christ. We were slaves at the cross. Pay the price so we could be freed. You see, we're God's people. We belong to Him. Robert Robinson wrote the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Uh, at least a, a version of it, a modern version of it. And he uh, lived an interesting life. He ended up... Uh, Straying away from God for a little while, lost communion with the Savior and in his declining years, and he kind of wandered into sin, was troubled in spirit, and lived a little sinful life, even though he wrote such a pen such a great version of a hymn. In the course of his journeys, he came across a young woman. And he uh, often talked about spiritual matters, and one day she asked him uh, what she th what he thought about this hymn that she was reading. He was astonished to find out it was that hymn that he'd written. Come thou fount of every blessing. He tried to evade her questions about his composition, and she continued to press with no response, and he began suddenly to weep. With tears streaming down his cheeks, he said, I'm the one who wrote that hymn many years ago. I give anything to experience again the joy I knew then. She was surprised and she was shocked. She assured him, she said, that the streams of mercy, mention that song, still flow. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Streams of mercy. They could touch his life and turn his wandering heart to the Lord. And he was restored in fellowship with God. The man who was straight was brought back. You see, the thing is, you're a fixer upper. I'm a fixer up. We're not some house that needs to be gussied up, but we're all broken people. We're all sinful people. Our bodies fail us. Our minds fail us. Our, our morality fails us sometimes. Our, our compasses of life can fail us. We're fixer uppers. There's hope for us all. This passage speaks about restoration, rehabilitation that can occur for God's people and His creation if we only ask Him to come into our lives. Now we may not get full restoration and fix her upper status and get totally fixed up until His second coming. When we get a few upgrades in the end with His Holy Spirit in our life. With God guiding us and leading us, we can on our way to being holy. We are all fixer uppers. We have to admit it first. We have to confess, God, I'm not what I need to be. God, I'm not perfect. God, I'm a sinner. God, I'm broken. I need you. 
Once we admit it, He can do His work. He can do His work. So the altar's going to be open here in a moment. If you'd like to pray, <coughs> the altar will be open for you to come and pray. Pray with me. Pray by yourself. And I encourage you to come as we sing our invitation on Him. Can everyone please rise for number 93? It came upon a midnight clear. see you on Tuesday night, but if I don't see you, have a Merry Christmas. Um, share the good news of Jesus. Not just about Santa Claus and gifts, but share the good news that we have a Savior who came once, was one, a God who was one of us, with us and one of us, who one day is coming again to usher in a new creation, a new, new way of life for us. To, to do away with pain and suffering and death and sorrow and arguing and bickering and crying. Uh, I, I pray, one thing I'm praising God for is I'm going to be a 24-hour news channel in heaven, I don't think. 
Uh, there's so much argument bigger in our country today. But uh, share the good news of Christ's love this holiday season, this Christmas season. Proud of this Christmas season. But again, remind you tonight at 6 o'clock, bring pickups, come on out, socialize. Fellowship is worship, right? It's a part of worship. But may God bless you and keep you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for the gift that you gave us so many years ago that continues to pay off, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice you made on the cross that redeems us and restores us. A people who have been ransomed in the wages of sin from death, Lord. I pray that this Christmas season will be a time of blessing for all of us, that, that uh, we will uh, participate in acts of love and charity for those around us and share your love, Lord, with others, especially those who are lost. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, and have me pray.